Ladies and gentlemen, today I have for you a comprehensive 2020 review of Brave Browser. For almost two years now, Brave has been my daily driver browser after switching away from Chrome, and I'll be sharing with you today everything you need to know, what's great about it, what still needs work, and why I think you should switch. If you've watched my videos before, welcome back. If you're new here, welcome for the first time, and thanks very much for stopping by. On this channel, you'll find weekly videos about blockchain, cryptocurrency, and other innovative technologies ranging from easy to understand educational videos, in-depth product reviews, internet privacy tips, and all sorts of good stuff like that. If that sounds like something that you're into, please do hit that subscribe button down there along with the bell notification button so you can find out whenever I post new content. Thank you in advance, and without further ado, let's hash it out. Now, just to get this out of the way right up front, I am not sponsored by Brave and this video is being made because I truly love this product and have used it religiously for ages. I have a lot of experience with it and I wanna share that with you. Now, for those of you who have followed my channel for a while, you'll know that I made a review of Brave both in 2018 and 2019. And in those videos, I covered big changes that came to the browser in those timeframes. In late 2019, Brave got the recognition it deserved with a feature in the Apple App Store's New Apps We Love section, and many large news outlets recommended Brave for desktop to millions of new users, bringing the total active user base towards 11 million monthly users, and probably even more now. Just recently, Brave also won its very own Product Hunt Golden Kitty Award for Best Privacy-Oriented Product of 2019, which is huge and super awesome. Now here we are in 2020 and I'm proud to report that Brave is yet again leaps and bounds ahead of where it was just one year ago and it remains my go-to daily browser. It's by far my number one. If you haven't already, I would encourage you to go ahead and download Brave Browser and give it a try using the link down in the description below. You have nothing to lose, it's totally free and if you don't like it, you can delete it. But for those of you who are wondering, what is Brave Browser? Brave is a privacy-first, ad-blocking web browser built on the open-source framework that underpins Google Chrome, meaning you get the ubiquitous UI UX from Chrome without all of the tracking and spyware in the backend. That said, many people ask me why I chose Brave over something like Firefox with extensions for ad block and tracker blocking. Well, this brings me to the first of my three top reasons to download Brave over another browser. The number one thing that makes Brave so unique from other browsers beyond its extremely efficient ad blocking engine is Brave's unique cryptocurrency integration with its native basic attention token. Now, a basic attention token is used to pay users like us for viewing anonymously matched ads inside the browser. Then those tokens that you earn subsequently can be used to pay content creators for premium content. They can be converted to other cryptocurrency or fiat currency and in the future redeemed for gift cards right on platform. Now much of 2018 and 2019 was building towards the release of this critical feature on Brave across mobile and desktop platforms, which eventually brought us out of beta and into version one where we are today. So on Brave's mobile apps now, on Android and iOS, as well as the desktop browsers, you can opt in, you can choose, to view advertisements on Brave's platform to earn money in the form of basic attention tokens. Still keeping privacy in mind though, ads are served to you locally without collecting your personal information to match you with ads on a server somewhere. Brave sends ad packages to your browser locally on your computer or your mobile device, and then ads are matched anonymously to you all within your own environment rather than on Brave servers. This means no more user accounts with your personal information stored on servers somewhere, no more personal information shipped away to advertisers. This is one of the most compelling reasons to use Brave in my personal opinion. Today, using Google Search and Google Chrome, your personal information is up for sale to the highest bidder and you've lost control of it the moment it leaves your computer. Google can sell your information and attention as if it's theirs and you get nothing in return. Many people don't care about this. Many people say, I'm happy to watch ads because I get a lot of things for free, right? In return, I get search engines and all these things. But Brave is giving you the same thing, but turning the model on its head, meaning that out of the total revenue that they earn from ads that they serve to you, you get 70% of the proceeds for giving your attention. 
and Brave keeps 30% for the services that they're providing and giving you this browser, serving the ads, so on and so forth. There are many who rationalize Google's practices by saying they provide so much free service to us, but nothing is truly free. And the impact of your personal information being shared so extensively is heavily underestimated in my opinion. You're much better off protecting your information as much as you can and seeing ads in a healthy way and earning a little bit of revenue as a result. Now this brings me naturally to my second and equally impactful reason to use Brave, and that is the buttery smoothness of their ad blocking engine and tracker blocking features. Even if you don't use an ad blocker, there is really no reason not to use one. And in my personal opinion, there are a few that come close to the one native to Brave browser. You can find those as Chrome extensions. One of those is uBlock Origin. Again, you can give it a try and see for yourself through the link down below how good Brave Browser's ad blocking actually is, but it is lightning fast. On sites like ESPN, which I can show you here, there are a ton of ads if you reload this up on Chrome and it does delay the load of the page. On Brave, this happens nearly instantaneously, no ads, and the page loads up quickly. Albeit, early on in Brave's history, ad blocking was a bit laggy and page compatibility was all over the place. But in 2020, I seldom find compatibility issues on websites and the load times are lightning fast compared to Chrome or Firefox ad blocker extensions in my humble opinion. This just shows the commitment that the team behind Brave has to improving their product. They converted their whole ad blocking engine over to Rust, a highly, highly efficient programming language. And this Rust implementation at its core resulted in a massive 65 times improvement in performance for this engine. I really noticed the difference from before and after this change, and you can find the code open source on their GitHub, which is also fantastic. These features, of course, work really well both on desktop and on mobile, which quite frankly makes Brave a top choice for mobile users as well. I've even heard people like Brave mobile even more than they like the desktop version. From here, I would expect Brave to continuously improve their ad block engine and their tracker blocking features, but there's also word that they'll be building a built-in VPN service for people who use Brave sometime in the next year. So hopefully in 2020, we'll see that happen. Now, the third big item that I wanna talk about is Brave's focus on privacy. Nowadays, I feel like people are so used to seeing ads, giving their personal information to anyone who asks, and even some people who don't ask, and that it's now just unconcerning to many people that their privacy is not respected online. The issue here is that there are broader implications to personal information being so readily available from identity theft and fraud to an online impersonation and all sorts of stuff like that, that poor security online and poor privacy online can actually cause for you. A rule of thumb should be that websites collect as little, if any data as possible, and they should be as clear as possible about it when they do in a transparent fashion. Brave is building their browser to put you back in control of your own data and your privacy with key features like ad advertising that's anonymous and local, cross device syncing of bookmarks being done anonymously without a user account over encrypted sync. They've also built a browser that has top of the line lightning fast ad block, tracker block, script blocking features built in natively with no extra extensions to download and that give you more control over how each website is dealt with in terms of these features. Brave lets you decide whether you want to use all of these features or none of them for each page that you visit. And beyond that, they've built in a Tor browsing feature that uses the DuckDuckGo search engine by default to give you a far more effective alternative to the nonsensical incognito mode in browsers that just routes you through Google all over again. Now, I have a video about incognito mode if you're interested that you can watch after this video. I'll link it up here. Brave's team is clearly very much involved in helping develop and refine privacy standards and ad blocking lists in the internet community, and their browser is a reflection of that. Now, if you don't care that much about privacy, that's totally fine. Brave has its own performance benefits over Chrome way outside of the privacy realm. And in my testing, Brave consistently uses less RAM and pages load much faster without all the ads sucking up bandwidth and running scripts behind the scenes on each page. For that reason alone, Brave is an improvement over Chrome, considering it has some of the best features of Chrome without all the bad ones. And one final quick bonus thing that I really like about Brave is transparency. Brave CEO, business development team, their developers, and their marketing team are active on social media and they listen to people. 
There are things that people say online and those things get fixed. And whenever they do performance testing, they posted something recently about its comparison and performance to Chrome. They post their exact process. They post how they collected the data. They post all the results so that you can make your own determination about what they're saying. They're not just marketing to you and telling you, hey, trust us on this one. Now, of course, there are things that I don't like about Brave or that I think need to be improved. For example, their encrypted sync feature has always worked for me, but I've heard so many complaints about it being a bit wonky for other folks. Hopefully that'll be fixed in sync V2, which is supposed to come out this year. But of course, that's a feature that people really, really want and works perfectly in Firefox and a bunch of other services like that. I also find that Brave is severely lacking in customization features which for me is not that important as it is for someone else who loves something like Opera, Vivaldi, or Firefox where everything is customizable. I don't really use those features, but it's still a bummer not to be able to move controls around to where I want them or to customize the new tab page as much as you can in other browsers. And finally, the lack of alternatives right now to the uphold exchange that you can use to withdraw your basic attention tokens after you earn from ads isn't that great. There's really no options right now. And that requirement to complete KYC, know your customer, means that if you haven't already worked with Uphold, that's another entity that you have to give your personal information to. I understand KYC is required, a lot of people hate it, but I wish there were more options, like if someone already works with Coinbase, it'd be easier just to let them use an account they've already done KYC on rather than making them use a different one. So I hope they introduce a new feature to let people send their tokens externally without KYC, at least to their own hardware wallets, or they just add more exchanges so people can move off to one they already use. There are regulatory question marks, there are regulatory concerns there, so I'm sure that these things are being discussed in terms of compliance to make sure that fiat and crypto off ramps are handled properly. Totally understand that. This is V1 of Brave. And I know from personal conversations with folks at Brave that there's a ton of new development and progress for features in 2020. So I personally expect a ton of improvement this year as well, following the theme of massive improvement from 2018 to 2019. Things like the ability for advertisers to load in ads in a self-serve dashboard rather than going through the Brave team themselves would be fantastic. Mobile basic attention token withdrawal features would be awesome. A marketplace to redeem basic attention token for gift cards and a ton more customization features I think are probably coming, at least I hope so, and that's the rumor. As you well know, I'm a fan of Brave and I want this project to succeed. I believe that they've already succeeded in a lot of ways getting to V1 and getting close to 12 million active users well over 11 million active users, that's a fantastic, fantastic thing. And if you're willing to download Brave and give it a try, please do use my link down below and leave me a comment telling me what you think after you've gotten to use it. If you run into any issues, let me know as well so I can share that feedback with the Brave team. They are super receptive to feedback and want as much of it from the community as possible. As always, folks, you will find links to some more awesome content on the screen here. If you have some time to stick around, it would be awesome if you would watch some more content on the channel. And I thank you so much for watching. Cheers.